Hello, my name is Gabriel from Gabak USA. In this video, I'll show you what to know when you have to buy soldering station. So, in this case, I made three main points. So, we will talk about that. And later on, I'll show you the practice. So, how to set up the soldering station, how to make it work. So, that way, you will learn how to use it. So, first of all, if you are a technician and you are starting just to repair like electronic cars or all those things, maybe from motherboards, TV and everything, it would be a good start. Maybe you are used to have the old and crappy soldering like this one. The bad thing about this kind of soldering is that they are not that powerful and you're not going to be able to measure the temperature. So with this kind of device that I'm going to show you now, you're going to be able to do that. So in this case, this soldering is a very good brand. The brand is good, but it's just 40 watts. And if you buy, let's say, one of 60 watt, the problem is that you're going to get just that. And if you need less temperature, you're not going to be able to make it. So with this device that I'm going to show you, you have the option to measure the temperature that you want to use on the electronic board that you're going to repair. Another thing that you have to keep in mind, this kind of soldering can go very high so you can damage the component the electronic component that you may use so in this case you have to make sure that the component that you are going to use use certain temperature otherwise you're going to burn it so that way that is why you have that way you can make the repair in a safe way otherwise you will break it and you have to buy another component so if you have to solder something or desolder something this is the way to go another thing that you may use this kind of device is to repair cell phones maybe you have to unglue the gorilla glass or something like that and this is a good thing because the tips are very small otherwise if you are using like this like the, this huge heat gun this this one is very good just for huge screens but if you have to use it in very little spaces you're not going to make it because it's so big even like that it has like few tips that you can exchange but even like that they are too big so that is what you have to keep in mind another thing is this has like a measure thing to change the temperature but you don't have any display so you don't know how much temperature you are using if you want to know how much temperature you are using you have to use like infrared thermometer and that way you you can know what you are doing <laughs> otherwise you are going to burn everything and the bad thing about this it, there are other models that has just two sets to set the temperature one is burn and the other is super burn and you will burn everything <laughs> so that is what you have to keep in mind so when you buy these things there are many different uh, manufacturers and there are many different models so what I'll show you here in the whiteboard is things that will help you to decide what is the best soldering station that you may buy the first of all the first section is soldering heat gun sensor so what it means is means that if you are using the soldering of the heat gun and you stop using it it will go like in sleep mode so that way it will not overheat it will not burn anything else and the good thing about it is that the device will last a little bit longer and will use less energy that's so that is a good thing another thing is calibration because maybe if you use like the heat gun or just the soldering in 300 uh, celsius and you know that it's not providing you this kind of temperature let's say like 310 and then with the calibration what you can do is use a little bit less you can calibrate it like 290 so that way it will reach uh, uh, 300 celsius no problem it's the same if it's over that temperature you can go low and high no problem but with both things with the heat gun and with the soldering another thing is the fan sensor what happens if the heat gun that comes with this device is failing or you just try to jam the fan so what happened the heat gun will burn 
or the system will fail. So in this kind of devices, the good thing is that it has a sensor. When it senses that the fan is stopping or is not working properly, the device will shut down and it will show you on the screen. So I hope these kind of tips help you. And let's start with the practice and I'll show you how to use this device. And let's see you in the end of this video. Now we are going to see how is physically this device. So this soldering station, first of all, I'll disconnect the soldering like we see here. So you can use it with or without it, no problem. If you need it just for heat, you can use this. I'll be unplugging it from the back part so you can see it from the other side. Here we have the input for the power, for the power cable. Here we have the switch to turn it uh, to turn it on and off. Here we have the input voltage. Here it says 220 voltage, but there are version that works with 110. The rated current is 6 amps, and surely it was made in China. Also you have the fuse. If something goes wrong, it will cut and itself, I mean, it will burn itself and then you can change it. Here we have the display, we have the buttons to go down and up, uh, we have the menu button and the enter bo button is the blue one, and with this one, with this potentiometer, we can change the speed of the air that comes out from this heat gun. We have the power button here and here because you can turn it uh, separately from this side to this one or you can use both at the same time. And here is the connector to power up the soldering. So now we are going to connect it and I'll show you how it works. It has one position so there is no problem so you are not going to be able to put it backwards or whatever in any other position so when it's tight we're going to plug it in as you can see the screen is on now if I turn it off you will see it turns black I'll show you another thing that I almost forgot this is the soldering iron so if you want to change the end, the tips, you have to unscrew this nut and then it will come the way you see it and then you will change this. Then you can put the one you want, thinner or wider. Once it is in this position, you can adjust it and that's it. Here we have like a little tray. We can put some screws if you want to or we can just keep it for this so in case when we are using the soldering and we have to clean it we are going to use this. So we are going to leave it like that and it goes here as you can see. Okay this thing that you see here this is like a kind of sensor so when it goes inside of here it will sense that it's inside of this holder so it will stop uh, working or it will enter in the sleeping mode that we are going to see in a little bit. Also we have this point that we see here, the tips. So if you need something wider or thinner, you can change it, just unscrew this and you can start changing the tips. Uh, here in the holder it has some kind of sensor here so you will know when you put it here and it can stop working too. So the sensor is here, it might be some kind of magnet or something like that in both sides so that is how it should work. Now we are going to leave these things inside of here. So you will see, now we are going to turn it on. Okay, first of all we are going to start with the soldering. So we are going to power up and you will see the temperature. As you see, it's rising up 
and it will arrive until 290 or 300 I don't remember what was the temperature that I set it up so once it arrived at that point it was 299 it will stop uh, hitting the the point so we can start soldering just right away if we taste it here you will see you see it's working okay I'll clean it so there's no smoke okay <clears throat> now I'll put it here and after a minute that is set it up here you see one minute we can put it like two three four five and then once the minute arrives or once the minutes pass it will start in the sleeping mode so it will decrease the temperature to 200 once it reach there it will stop there and after we remove it from here you will see that it will start rising again or will rise the, again the temperature so that the, that way you will keep it the soldering kind of warm so you can work fast and it will prolong the life of the soldering the same thing happened here when you lift it up and you let's say you have it on 300 or 200 and then once you put it here it will start decreasing the temperature until it arrive until it takes until it arrives like to 100 so once you put it there it will stop working but if you leave it if you use it in 100 as soon as you put it here it will stop working but if you use it above 100 celsius it will start it will keep working and blowing air until it cool off this part now as you can see here it now is it is in sleeping mode so as soon as I take it out from here you will see the temperature start rising it's rising again the temperature so that is how it works now I'm going to leave it like that and I'll show you how to operate this machine first of all push the blue button and you will see the soldering blinking so you, that way you can change the temperature let's leave it on 300 then if you push it again it will go to sleep mode and you can change it like that if you want to wait just one minute or three minutes until it goes into the sleeping mode if you push it again you can change by celsius or fahrenheit and then if you change it again it will go to, to celsius from fahrenheit to celsius or celsius to fahrenheit if you push it again and again and again you can go to the calibration mode so you can change it from here let's say that this soldering is working at 310 but you want it on just 300 and then you can go to the calibration mode and then you can put it like minus 10 degrees so that way instead of going 310 you will have it in 300 that is the best way to calibrate the soldering and you can do the same thing with the heat gun that you see here so that is one thing that you have to think it works if it's too much or too little and it's not in the right set and the right temperature that you want to use you can calibrate it that way besides that that's it so we are going to turn it off and we are going to use the other one we're going to power up and you will see this as soon as I lift it up it will start working as you see and we can use this potentiometer to lift up the to increase the speed of the heat now we are using it in 157 and we when we leave it like that and the temperature goes to 100 you will see that it will it will stop so to change the temperature press one and then you put the temperature that you want and then you push again you can use it in manual when auto in auto it, it means when you lift it up from here it will start working as soon you, you put it here it will stop uh, working if it, it has 100 degrees if it has more you will have to wait a few seconds or one minute until the temperature decrease and you can use it in manual mode manual mode it means that it will start it will work all the time 
it doesn't matter if you hear or if you, if you have it in your hand or whatever. So that is how it works. Now, if we push it again, remember if we don't touch this in four seconds, it will set the settings that you just left. So if we push it again, we can go here, here, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Uh, we can do the calibration here, as you can see. We can go minus or or the or more or positive or negative. Um, basically, that that's it. I mean, you can put it as hot as as you want. I think it was going to go like 400 or 500. I don't think so more than that, but usually it's it's better. Or it's good. It's a good advice to use it like 100, 150, no more than that if, for if you're going to use it to repair cell phones. You see 480, that is the maximum. So if you use it all the way, you will burn everything very quickly. So it's better to use it lower and you can use it for more time. Let's leave it in 150, okay. If you want, you can use something like that to measure the temperature for the cell phone and everything. But if you want to measure the temperature of this or this, I think it will be better to use a thermal couple. So that is what it can resist uh, like high temperatures. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Click on like if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. And if you have any doubts, just leave me your question in the comment section below and see you to the next time.